Hello everybody, my name is Chris Brady, author of the Boeing 737 Tech Guide and the Boeing 737 Tech Site. And today I'm going to talk to you about anti-skid inoperative. Okay, so the, the reason behind this uh, this presentation, and it, it, it is only a short one, um, is that uh, a couple of days ago a video has come to light which was taken by a passenger on board a 737-800 uh, which was landing at uh, Uja in Morocco. Now the video, which um, I'll show you immediately after this slide, it shows sparks or, or flames coming from the left main landing gear after touchdown. The reports that the, the aircraft had dispatched with the, the anti-skid system in op uh, in accordance with the MEL. So th the reason why I'm doing this video is um, it's certainly not to, uh, well, it's not to be sensationalist or to indeed pass any judgment whatsoever on the crew because I don't know, you know, what what they did or how well or or otherwise they might have done it. But it's just to give you all a quick reminder of the of the anti skid system and the operational procedures involved. Okay, here's the video. So let's have a little review about the anti-skid system. Um, so wh wh what it does is it, it, it it's actually some wheel speed tra transducers wh wh which are in the, the the wheel hubs of the main landing gear. So it's only on the main landing gear, not 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 the nose gear. Um, and what what those trans those transducers do is they they monitor the wheel deceleration and control the, the brake metered pressure to, to prevent a skid. Now there are actually five functions uh, to, to anti-skid. Um, the first of course is skid control. Um, it's only active above eight knots otherwise uh, you'd have difficulty bringing the aircraft to a complete halt. Um, and this is used uh, to control individual wheel deceleration during normal braking anti-skid. Um, and both wheel pairs during alternate braking anti-skid. So it's available uh, in both normal and alternate braking. Locked wheel protection is, is the next one and um, this compares wheel speeds when you're above 25 knots of the two inboard and two outboard wheel pairs and it'll release brake pressure from the from the slow wheel to, um, to, to let it catch up with the other one. Uh, the third function is touchdown protection. protection. Um, and this is to prevent wheel brake operation um, of the, oddly enough, only the number of the two and the number four wheels wh when the aircraft is, is in the air. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously you as crew should should never be having your feet anywhere near the, the, the brake pedals in the air, but I guess that, you know, in addition to that, it, it could prevent some sort of system fault uh, from inadvertently uh, having you land with the brakes on. The, the fourth one is hydroplane protection. Um, so this is obviously very important on wet runways, which we'll, we'll come on to discuss. Um, so this decreases the wheel brake pressure to, to, to wheels one and three when the ground speed is more than the wheel speed. Uh, and finally, the, the gear retract inhibit it just prevents the alternate anti-skid system from operation during normal landing gear retraction. All right. so. We uh, assumed that the aircraft was was dispatched uh, in accordance with the with the MEL. Now the I've I've put a copy of the MEL reference on the right there, and you can see that th this is indeed p permissible. Uh, the one system installed, non required, and the M and the O tell you that there are both maintenance and operational procedures. Uh, so it may be not provided the associated anti skid channels are, are deactivated. And operations are conducted in compliance with the AFM. All right. Well, I bet not many of you have seen an AFM. Um, they're, they're, they're fairly rare documents, usually, usually kept in the head office of the airline. Um, so what we get is the um, is the FCOMs and the the, the the QRH, the flight crew training manual, and what have you. So I'll I'll, I'll go through those extracts with you uh, with you now. 
Um, all right, so looking at the uh, the maintenance procedures here, um, and I'm not going to go through these in any detail because um, obviously, you know, we're, we're we're more interested in the flying aspect of of this particular presentation than the than the how it works. Um, so the maintenance procedures are all geared around deactivating the the inop anti skid channels. Now, again, this is the second time we've referred to channels. There are two. Uh, if you look at that that little photo there, that that kind of gives the game away. That that's on the P63 uh, circuit breaker panel behind the FO, and that tells you that there's both an inboard and an outboard anti-skid channel. And the note I've highlighted is that if only one of the two anti-skid channels is in off, the other channel can be left on to provide anti-skid protection for the for the other the other system. So you can legally fly with a single channel. And, and that will give you some degree of protection for either the inboard or, or the outboard wheels. Now the this is where it gets interesting with the with the operational procedures and these are all geared around having um, a dry runway for takeoff, although bizarrely not for landing, um, reducing runway speeds, maximizing runway length and using um, special techniques. So it's, it's all about risk mitigation here. So going through these uh, briefly, reduced takeoff thrust is uh, using assumed temperature is not permitted. This again is just risk management, and this is natural AFM limitation, um, so that you you don't use more runway than is necessary. And the reason for this is that um, your RTO function is is uh, is not going to be available to you. So <laughs> why would you compromise your uh, your your runway stopping distance available by doing a reduced takeoff thrust? Um, you know, you, you you just wouldn't. So um, so it's full th full thrust takeoffs with um, with with anti skid and op, and that will give you the maximum amount of runway available for uh, for the RTO case. Next one, takeoff on wet runway is not permitted um, unless uh, now the, there's there's very few aircraft with these where where the the wet anti skid re resistance surfaces is applicable and used. Um, most AFMs I've seen don't allow for this, um, but you never know, you might have one which will, in which case your FCOMs will, will tell you you can. Um, but it, this again stands to reason using a wet runway is, um, is, is probably unwise, uh, be, because as we all know from you know even just driving cars, there's more chance of skidding on a wet surface than a dry one. Third one is that the anti the order brake system uh, must be switched off because uh, that uses the anti skid. So if if you do have to do an RTO or, or, or brake after landing, it's manual braking and manual use of the speed brake. Fourth item: payload may be affected due to takeoff and landing runway length requirements. I will come on to this, but obviously you need to check your performance, your takeoff and landing uh, performance. To, to see you know what what runway length you need for your for your weight and and the rest of the conditions. Fifth item: adjust the takeoff and landing gross weight limits as required for anti skid in op. Yeah, so uh, that's kind of following on from point four. Six: ex extend the speed brakes manually since automatic ex extension uh, may not be operative with the anti skid in op. Yeah, I would assume, and, and in fact they're telling you to assume that uh, that. That the, the the speed brakes uh, won't extend manually, um, sorry, won't extend automatically. So you need to to, to brief uh, PNF, uh, sorry P PM, that, that he needs to manually extend the speed brakes. Um, and don't forget that's for the RTO as well as landing. So uh, include that in the takeoff brief. Uh, item 7, use anti skid and braking procedure, see AFM section 4, that's the performance section, including the actions in step 8, and I will show you those on the next slide. And the, the final one, landing procedure review, now the, the, this this really, I mean it's all important, but this, this in particular are things that you need to familiarise yourself with and, uh, and and brief before before landing. So the, 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 the technique is as follows. 
use minimum braking consistent with runway length and conditions to reduce the possibility of a tire blowout. In other words, use the full runway length to, uh, to, to use minimum braking. Second one, do not apply the brakes until the nose wheel is on the ground and the speed brakes have been manually deployed. And that, again, as you've seen from the, the tech review a couple of slides ago, is because the, the, there's no protection for landing with the, uh, with, with the brakes applied. So, uh, I mean, not that your, your, your feet should be anywhere near the, 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 the brakes, uh, you know, for, for, for landing anyway, but, but after landing, you know, wait until the nose wheel is on the ground they're saying so not just the mains but the nose wheel before applying um, b before applying the, the, the brakes and finally brake in a, initially using light steady pedal pressure um, increase the pressure as the ground speed decreases and don't pump the brakes yeah this is quite an important one this about not pumping the brakes because if if you're doing so you're you're having to reapply the brakes and it's it's that application of brake that increase in in the uh, in the braking force which is the the thing that can lead to the to the skid okay so um i promised you look at the afm here is one it's very very light on detail as as afms always are um, but in section four, that's all it says, um, and you know it, it. It's nothing more. In fact, it, it's quite a lot less than than you got from the the MEL reference. So just raise raise the speed brakes at touchdown. Initially, initiate wheel braking using very light pedal pressure and increases the ground speed decreases. And uh, a reminder that auto brakes are not allowed with anti skidding op. So that's it. As I say, the 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 AFM quite quite a. a a thin document really on um, on material which is why we have FCOMs. Performance um, obviously essential that, the, that this is checked um, we, we don't of course get our performance data from the um, from the AFM we get it from the FCOMs or probably these days from uh, an EFB or iPad or, or whatever your your company provides um, Hopefully they're a bit more user friendly than than tables or even worse graphs, um, but you should be able to to plug in the data for you, for your conditions and and it'll uh, it'll spit out a landing distance for you. But as you can see from here, um, the the landing distance on a dry runway baseline figure there is 65 tons, 1615 meters. But notice how much it increases with uh, with, with reduced braking action. Um, Personally, if I had this, I would have to. I, I would no way. I I would land on on a braking action that that was other than the good or dry. Uh, if the if the runway is contaminated, then I I would be inclined not to go. Um, or if you've got fuel divert to somewhere where the conditions are better. That's just my personal opinion. Uh, it's very 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 much up to to each individual crew on the day. Um, but you've got an increase of around about 200 meters there for a wet runway, which is good, um, over a dry runway. So it's it's actually not a great deal. Um, but obviously you do need to be much more careful in your technique on a on a wet runway than a than a dry than a dry one. The QRH procedure now th this. Uh, again, the, the, just to remind you that this is not applicable um, for a, a dispatch condition. So at dispatch, you use the MEL. So if it's already in the tech log, you use the MEL. If it happens to you in flight, then it's the QRH that you go to. Uh, I've included it here for the sake of completeness, and of course, it, you know, you you may consider it good practice to have a look at this uh, in flight just to see what uh, what information it offers and the, the, there's nothing wrong with that um, but having checked it, um, it, it I can tell you that there's no difference between what's written here and the the MEL operations procedure so uh, it is all covered the other place you would uh, you'd be probably well advised to check uh, uh, assuming you have time is the the flight crew training manual um, 
often forgotten about this, but um, but I think it's really good value if you if you got time in flight to to have a read of it because it it it, it usually gives a slightly expanded version of uh, either QRH or the MEL procedure. Um, and and you can see here that that whilst most of it's the same, what what it has included is is this section of highlight at the bottom in red. Uh, where it's discussing the use of wet runways. So it, it actually says, flight testing has demonstrated braking effectiveness on a wet groove runway similar to that of a, as a on a dry runway. However, caution must be exercised when braking on any wet, ungrooved portions of the runway with anti-skidding off to avoid tyre failure. So uh, a little bit more sort of flesh on the bones here uh, from the FCTM. So to summarise, um, I, as I've said, I've got no information as to why this, this wheel behaved as it did on the day or if the procedures were, were followed correctly. Um, and my intention here is not to pass any judgment whatsoever, but simply to use this event as a reminder to, to crew about the associated systems and procedures. My advice is to know your systems, follow your company procedures with, for dealing with uh, either defects, you know, at dispatch, or non-normal events if it, if it happens in flight, in a careful and systematic manner, and always try and anticipate the worst case scenario, which obviously is clearly what this crew had. Okay, thanks very much everyone for your attention. As usual, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe and share amongst your colleagues. Thank you.